And so hi, welcome back. Uh, open the floorboards to our next tutorial. And we want to move from steady state to non-steady state problems, which are way more interesting and relevant uh, if you want to do uh, CFD research. So we'll look, start looking at the most basic uh, or the second most basic solver uh, for uh, non-steady state uh, things. Normally it's a boyan businesque ping perform. That's the simplest, I suppose, uh, convection solver. And now uh, in buoyant pimple foam, uh, we have this uh, natural and and uh, force convection solver for compressible and incompressible flow. And sadly, we only have two tutorials to work with, but we'll make do with that. Okay, so there's one called the hot room and one called the thermal couple test case. So if we take a look at the hot room, this is what we are most familiar with anyway. Let's take a look at all run. Okay, so this is pretty simple. We have block mesh, restore zero directory. We have a run application called set fields, and then we have get application. So let's take a look at how the thing is set up. Okay, I'm going to VI uh, system block mesh dict. Okay, so we take a look here. We have many, we have a very much more simple way of setting up the, uh, the, what am I going to say? Yeah, we have a very, very much more simple way of setting up uh, the geometry. Look at the block mesh, it only has like eight points as compared to like, more 15 uh, ish points just now. Well, no, more than 15, it looks like 30 points in the simple form directory, right? Yeah, uh, so we can take a look. The, the, the things are pretty rudimentary. It's just one block without, it, without that radiation box that we were talking about just now. Okay, so uh, instead of that, we it seems like the all run, the all run file kind of alludes to a different way of uh, having that little box geometry. It's called set fields. So let's, take, let's take a look at the set fields dictionary. So we go to system and we find that we have something new here called set fields dict or set fields dictionary. So let's take a look at what's inside set fields. All right. So set fields is this. Uh, in it kind of selects. All right. It selects a region in space. It gives it a default value. For example, this scalar field value with a temperature of 300, okay? And then it gives, it tells you, okay, this is the region I wanna set, right? Um, and then this region is using box to face. This is something pretty familiar if we did a uh, snapping X mesh before. Oh no, you, you went through my uh, create patch and everything before. This is, uh, this is drawing a box with these dimensions or these coordinates. And um, in that box, uh, it, it kind of uh, gives it, in that box, it kind of gives it a face set of sorts. Okay, so box to face, that's one. And then it gives the value, the value of T equals to 600 Kelvin. So 300 Kelvin is the default, but this box is extra hot. So this is how this uh, set field is being done. Okay, so let's go back, CD0 original, and we see that, again, we have very similar files as before. We have T, U, alpha T, blah, 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 meaning to say this, these things tell me, tell me, tell us there's a turbulence to it. Alpha T also tells us, okay, there is some turbulent, uh, turbulent uh, thermal diffusivity. So let's take a look at alpha T, right? So this is a alpha T wall function which, uh, well, we already know what this represents, so I'm not going to take a look, uh, not going to delve in too much. Let's take a look at the U velocity. Again, no slip, no slip, no slip. Nothing too surprising there. So let's take a look at the temperature boundary conditions. Floor is this. Uh, fixed value of 300. Uh, fixed walls is an adiabatic. The only thing is this one looks way more interesting. Okay, so lumped mass wall temperature. 
Kappa method is fluid thermal, kappa is none. The mass is 1000 CP. The heat capacity is uh, 4100. So what does this mean? I mean, to me, at, okay, on first look, it looks like it's talking about, hey, maybe this uh, ceiling has some uh, uh, varying temperature, right? Why is the temperature varying? Because, uh, um, because it's getting heated up. If the ceiling is heated up, then uh, we will expect the temperature to change over time. Which, I, which is why I think we have a CP here. If there's no, if we want to keep the temperature constant, we won't have to uh, bother putting in some specific heat capacity. So let's take a look and see whether this conjecture is right by searching this on the internet. All right, so let's take a look at lump mass wall temperature boundary conditions. So we'll see this uh, openform.com. Uh, this is the temperature boundary condition, okay? So this is the update, okay? Thermal lumped mass condition. So this is the one we're talking about. The new lumped mass wall temperature boundary condition sets a uniform temperature according to energy balance with a lumped mass model. What does that mean? It means that uh, if let's say you have an entire wall, it means that let's say you have an entire ceiling or wall. So let's say you're, you're somehow heating this up with a flame of some sort so it's a uh, okay i should use some heat flux localized heat flux right localized heat flux at the wall okay localized heat flux at the wall well uh if the temperature was constant at the wall then it will kind of just absorb heat without changing temperature because the thermal mass is so big but now we have this uh, lumped uh lumped uh, whatever lumped mass wall temperature what it means is that okay this thing will definitely heat up but we won't have it such that there's a hot spot here and the rest of the place is cooler they will take the wall as one entire you know very conductive material and the wall the the heat received by this part is spread evenly across the whole wall so that is what it means so there's, there's an energy balance, yes, the wall does heat up, but it heats up evenly throughout the whole thing. Okay, it sets a uniform temperature. Okay, so it starts at 300, and then it goes depending on the heat capacity. So this is one interesting boundary condition that we can uh, kind of talk about. And the mass that is set is 1000, that's why. The, the whole mass, the lumped mass. Okay, so, all right, we can take a look at, uh, yeah, this is where it is, Boyan Pimple Room, hot foam. Okay, so this is the C file, which you may or may not understand as for now, but at least you know where to look for it. So this, this one, I can put it inside the description, so you can take a look at what it is. Okay, so now we understand how the floor and ceiling and the boundary conditions are being set. Okay, so the new T, everything we don't, we're not going to look through because we know what the meaning, physical meaning of those are. Okay, let's see whether there are any other properties that we look at, we want to look at. Okay, G is still nine point eight one, nothing new. Thermal physical properties. Again, we have a H zero thermal, meaning to say we use the enthalpy or internal energy pure mixture, uh, constant transport, constant thermal, we have a perfect gas, and a reference temperature. So all these are pretty much the same as what we have uh, discussed before. Uh, and look at turbulence properties and see the model. This is a K-epsilon, K-epsilon model. So nothing too much to discuss there. And yeah. So we roughly roughly know what, what's going on with this, uh, with this, uh, buoyant uh, pimple foam hot room there's a 600 degree box somewhere and that is defined by the set fields utility so it splits it up into some sort of region and uh, yeah let's just do an all run and 
and let's see what happens. The set fields is running. So we can take a look at the log.set fields because this is really interesting, the set fields utility. So it sets the field default values with the scalar temperature. So and it sets the field region values. So there will be a box with such faces. Um, so on the patch floor with uh, set four values. Uh, so meaning that there's a, there are new patches being created, new boundaries being created, and that will kind of affect things. Uh, it will make for new boundary conditions. So it looks like it's run completely, which is surprisingly fast. Let's take a look at the buoyant pimple foam. Okay, so this is a piezo mode. Okay, it runs for a while. So the current number we as for pimple foam, it can run more than one. So that's the thing you can know. Uh, okay. This is surprisingly fast. Okay. All right. So we can take a look at uh, this. We can take a look at um, the output. Pimple hot room dot foam. I don't suspect there to be much temperature changes, but it's just a demonstration that this solver actually works. Buoyant pimple foam, hot room. Okay, there's a pressure difference due to hydrostatic pressure. Nothing too new. And you can use the wireframe. Okay, so this is a different kind of a hot room case. Yeah, so that's what the set field does. Um, is basically, basically, um, it tells you that okay, this this part, this part, I want it to be hotter than the rest of the parts. Okay, it creates a different patch, so to speak. So since the mesh size is small, I suppose the calculations run really, really fast, which is kind of not surprising. Uh, all right. So yeah, um, that's that's all. It's not very interesting case. Uh, but uh, what what it does tell us is how how we can set up a buoyant pimple foam case. Very simple one. It's a different kind of hot room, and it, it shows us how to use this uh, set fields uh, utility to uh, put a boundary condition that is not the same. There is only one patch over here that is, you know. Uh, a different temperature from the rest of the of, of the place. Yeah. Mm. Oopsie. Yeah, and that's that's all for the hot room. It's not very interesting. After that. Okay. Um, the input files are more or less the same. Um, and that's all we need to know. Of course, we. As with all. Um, as with all uh, transient cases, we can look at the control deck to see what the delta T is. And in this case, the delta T is huge. It's like, what? Uh, two seconds. And that's why I calculate so quickly. Okay, and the pimple form does give you that advantage to be able to run the things faster. Okay, so. Yeah, that, that's part one of uh, buoyant pimple form. It's not too much of an evolution, not too much of a, uh, a gap in the input files we need to take note as compared to the buoyant simple form. So in terms of learning, that's about it. We, might, we can look at the other case, of course, because this one doesn't actually have radiation. It's just a convection. We can look at the thermal couple test case to see what's going on. I'm going to just do an all run and to start us off, but let's take a look at what all run is first. Okay, so block mesh and the buoyant pimple foam. Nothing too different. CD zero. We see the I default. Ah, so that means there's a finite volume discrete ordinates method kind of a thing going on. So there is some radiation 
going on here. So you see radiation properties. Yeah, FVDOM. Final volume discrete audience method. That's why you see the I thingy pop up again. Okay, so and you see the boundary radiation properties. There you go. Nothing too new from what we've discussed before. And we just have four input files. Alright, so let me let me all run this and then we'll just call it this uh, a day for our first discussion of buoyant pimple foam. Uh, and why are we talking about buoyant pimple foam? Because we, we want to see, you know, uh, um, what do you call that? Uh, we want to see how how to uh, treat transient cases. Now, also, we want to see, you know, um, the effect of a transient uh, time varying heat flux or time varying temperature boundary condition. And that will be very interesting to study using this buoyant people form. And that's the end goal of this, uh, at least this segment of the, the video series. And of course, we'll eventually want to look for conjugate heat transfer multi region form. And part of it will be a conduction, part of it will be a convection. So there will be a region where it's uh, using Laplacian foam, a region where it's using buoyant pimple foam or some other kind of convection solver. And this will help build us up to CHD multi-region foam, which is a way more complicated solver, but we will want, definitely want to know, to know how to use that. All right, so I'll call it a day. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.